Hi, everyone. Welcome to the workshop Introduction to Social Media Strategy. I'm here with Mohamed Tijati. He is a leading communication consultant, international trainer, and digital strategist. So, Mohamed, I will leave the stage to you. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here at the um, Startup Without Borders Summit. A uh, really exciting time to see speakers and trainers from all over the world coming together uh, to hopefully inspire and empower entrepreneurs uh, from all over the world. So as you all know, I'm, I'm uh, going to be talking uh, about social media strategy today. And this is just a very, very basic introduction. Generally, this course, I usually give it over a few months uh, when, and we go into detail into a lot of different uh, topics. So each slide that I'm going to be talking about today is generally a course on its own. But it's very good for people who are starting off um, their startups or they don't really need a lot of information, but a little bit of guidance on how to start working on social media or what are the things that they need to think about in order to have a proper social media strategy. So very quickly, my name is Mohamed Hijazi. I'm currently based in Beirut, Lebanon, and I have a diverse experience in many uh, different industries for over uh, a decade. More than 120 clients in 20 plus countries, more than 100 events managed, and more than 20, 25,000 leaders trained. So let's let's quickly jump in and start talking about what is a social media strategy. A social media strategy is a plan of how to maximize engagement and interactions across social media um, to achieve your company's objectives. So these objectives may be things like generating leads or improving your brand awareness or creating a viral effect. So in order for us to create a social media strategy or before we actually do that, we need to go back and, and think about what are the assets that I have and what are the assets that I need in order to achieve a proper social media strategy. You know, people uh, most of the time think that social media is very easy to do. Uh, I can just give it to my intern or my children or, you know, people who are very tech savvy, but they might not know anything about your business or might not even know how to use social media for business. And they always fall in the trap that social media is free, it doesn't require any money, and you can just do it um, very easily. So here are some of the assets that you need to think about in order to ensure that you have a proper strategy. First of all, the people and the time. Definitely social media will require some time. Uh, from you. So if you are, if you have a very little amount of people that uh, and you are in the first stages of your startup, you will need to make sure that whoever is going to be running your social media platforms will have the time to do it. So that it doesn't look like a haphazard um, posting and uh, you will not really get any engagement and you will not get any benefit out of it. Another thing that people don't tend to think about is content. Content usually takes a lot of time and resources to create. So you have to really think about what type of content you want to produce and who will be producing it and how much uh, time and effort you want to invest in doing that. And we have to know that content is very key. If we have bad content, we will not get any sort of benefit from social media. So whenever we're creating a strategy, we need to put all of that in mind. Other things that we need to think about is the tools. What are the tools do I have? And what are the tools that I want to use and I need to acquire? Of course, you can um, sign up for free on all the platforms that you would like to use, but there's a lot of other tools that can help you maybe measure or monitor your results or uh, convert your, um, your leads or how to actually get people from Facebook to your email newsletter. So there's a lot of tools that you can use and to know which ones you want to invest in. And finally, the budget. <clears throat> How much money can you afford to spend? Now, generally, a marketing budget is around 25% of the operating budget of your business. But I know that many startups cannot afford that much. So the, the benefit of social media is that no matter how much money you have, I mean, talking about realistic amount, 
you will uh, you are going to reach at least part of the audience that you want to reach. So also this is something that you have to think about. So the first step after that is to define your goals. Why am I using social media? Is it for increasing sales? And this is usually what most people are looking for. So creating first time customers who've never heard about you or creating leads such as getting people's phone numbers or having them um, submit a form or um, submit their email address to, to your newsletter. Am I doing it for marketing? So is it to improve relationships with existing customers and prospects? Or is it to increase loyalty, such as increasing retention and repeat sales from your already existing customers and improve your customer service? Or it can also be for human resources to attract and retain quality employees. And it can be any combination of these goals or other goals that you might set for your company. But in order to set a good goal or, or good goals that you should be uh, that should be easier for you to follow, you need to follow the SMART goals guidelines. So whenever you're setting a goal, it has to be specific. So you need to keep in mind who, what, when, where, which, and why of that specific goal. It has to be measurable. So you need to keep in mind what are the metrics are you going to use to determine if you meet your goal or not. And it needs to be assign assignable. So there's going to be someone who is going to be responsible for achieving that goal. And if the goal is not achieved, that is the person who has to take ownership for that mistake. And then it has to be realistic. So we can't really uh, put impossible uh, goals that we will never um, reach. So does this goal make sense with the broader business goals? And then it also has to be time bound. So if you never set it a time to achieve your goal, it will never be on your priority list and you will never achieve. So you have to set this target date for these deliverables. So here's an example. Instead of saying that I want to increase followers, you can uh, improve upon that and say something like, I will increase engagement by 30% on Facebook by March 31. This way, and this can be one of the goals that you're putting in your strategy, you, you already know who is going to be responsible for that because you said I, or you can replace it with any person from your team. And then it's specific because you're talking about you want to increase engagement and it's measurable. You said how, how, what is the percentage that you want to use. And then you set a deadline, which is March 31st. And here you're looking into a very realistic um, goal between the 30% and the deadline that you set. Once you set the, the, your SMART goal, you have to also think about where your business is in the IDAR model. The IDAR model is basically tells you where a customer is in your, uh, uh, is in your business. So let's go through them one by one. We have five stages. The first one is awareness, interest, desire, action, and retention. Whenever you're launching a new product or a new service or a new startup, no one really knows about you. So the first stage is to tell people, hey, look at me, I'm here. This is what I do, I exist. If people don't know that you exist, there's little to no chance that they will actually buy something from you. So that is the first phase that you, when creating a strategy, you need to do uh, think about what content you want to create for every different level uh, and how are you going to engage your potential customers. Then once people know more about who uh, know that you exist, they need to get interested in what you do. So you have to tell them about wh what are you doing? What is the service that you provide? What is the product that you provide? And try to get their interest. And then in order to get them more excited about your product, they need to have desire to purchase it, or they need to have uh, a desire to try it out or come to your store or depending on what your startup or business is. So here you can talk to them about what are the advantages of your product? Why is it better than other people? How is it going to add value to their life? And then the hardest step of this whole model is to convert a person or a customer from desire to action. Action is actually having them purchase your product or service. So here you can talk to them about maybe sending them offers or a free trial or something that can actually help them do this action and convert them. And after that, for the continuity of your business, you need to have them, you need to retain them. And this can mean two things. This can mean that they are repeat customers, but also that they're telling 
their friends and their colleagues about your product or service and introducing them to um, more people so that you can grow your business. So going through all of these models, and this is in general the, mar the, the model that can be applied to any type of marketing, but it's especially important for social media because you can really control every part of this um, of these stages whenever you're doing, for example, Facebook advertising, because there's different goals and different things that you can target when you're doing these types of advertising. Now that you understand the different um, uh, stages of the, uh, the customer experience model, we need to understand who your audience is. And this is really important. And I see a lot of people, um, a lot of brands and startups and companies failing to understand and target their audience properly. And that easily makes them lose money and time. To give you some examples, for example, I'm a single male who is, who is not married, who I don't have children, but I always see ads that are related to parents. And that way, um, people are wasting their money and their uh, efforts uh, into creating these ads. So for example, I see ads for diapers, I see ads for uh, children's milk, I see even sometimes sanitary products for women are targeted to me on Facebook or other platforms. So these companies are wasting their money because they're not segmenting their audience and they're not targeting their audience properly. In order to do that, you have to create personas and segment your audience into personas. So a marketing persona is a composite sketch of key segment of your audience. So for content marketing purposes, you need to uh, you need personas to help you deliver content that would be most relevant and useful to your audience. So what does that mean? It means that if I have a specific product, uh, I have maybe two or three or four different target audiences that are more likely to buy that product from me. And then each type of audience will have different interests and different key messages that I will need to target them with. I can't just have one message and target everyone because people are not the same and your audience is not going to be all the same. So here's some things that once you're creating your persona, you, you can think about. Um, so definitely you need to think about their demographics. Things like their age, their gender, maybe how much money they make, depending on how expensive your product or if, you're, if you are targeting a specific class of people um, where they live, definitely. And, some, and it's very important because using ads, you can target people almost down to the street that they live on. Where their education level or where they have studied, uh, their family status, are they married, are they single, do they have children? Um, and then what hobbies or interests do they have? And also it's very important to understand their goals and challenges in life. So what are their values and fears and how you can uh, relate to, um, how can they relate to your product? So you can also think about which marketing platforms they are on. And as we're gonna talk about it in the next slide. So do they watch TV or do they notice the radio and print or are they mostly on social or on digital like website and email or do they notice outdoor stuff? And what is the social behavior that they usually um, go to your social media platforms to, to do? So are they looking for information or are, you, are they a fan of your product or are they an influencer that you can potentially uh, help you uh, promote your business? Or are they a detractor, someone who's always negative and someone who is always trying to um, uh, influence negatively other people. And once you know all of that information and you, and you dissect that specific audience, you can create an elevator pitch for that specific sub audience that you have. An elevator pitch is a very short, um, convincing statement or um, argument to convince them to try your product or service. And it, it's called an elevator pitch because it has to be as short as an elevator ride. If you're going into an elevator and you want to convince someone that you just met uh, to try something, then it has to be really short and really convincing. So once you have divided up all of your audience uh, into different segments, you need to choose which channels you want to use. And it, it's very segmented nowadays because every channel that you, you use has a specific audience on it. So quickly, we can go through them. Definitely, the uh, if you're targeting the youth, you will have to be on TikTok 
on I know, Instagram. And because most of them have already left Facebook or don't choose Facebook because recently all their parents and grandparents have joined the platform. So if you're targeting people who are below 25, you're more likely to reach them on Facebook, Instagram, possibly Snapchat. If you're targeting people uh, who are uh, all older than 35 or 30, they're more likely to reach them on Facebook. Um, if you're targeting people who uh, are in certain countries and you need to understand what, which countries are, uh, uh, which platforms are popular in specific countries, for example, in the Gulf, Facebook is not as popular as other countries. So people like to tend to use um, Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat because they really care about privacy concerns. And then if you're going for a mass audience and if you're going with, uh, you want to have direct customer service conversations with your customers, definitely WhatsApp for Business is now a very important tool that you can use um, to uh, start your uh, get orders or get customer service uh, with that platform. So thinking about each specific uh, audience segment that you have and deciding which how much time and effort you want to put in producing content for channels, depending on uh, how important it is for you to reach that specific audience. Another thing that you have to talk uh, to, to think about very well is uh, your voice. And your voice means that your company's voice, how does it sound like? So a company's voice is the uh, uniform, uniformity in the selection of words or attitudes and values of your company while addressing the target audience or others. It is how your company conveys its brand personality to its audience. So your company's voice is its personality described as an adjective. And we're going to talk about that more into detail now. So your, uh, your company's brand voice is divided into four parts, or there are four pillars of it. First of all, which is the character. Um, who does your brand sound like? So if you picture your brand as a person, here's where you can flush out all of the identity with the specific attributes that fit who you want to sound like online. And then your tone, which is basically the general vibe of your brand, the language that you want to use. And here we're talking about which language specific, like English, Arabic, French, or anything specific in terms of what language you're using, but also how is your language like? What kind of words do you want to use uh, in your social media conversations? And the fourth pillar is the purpose. What is your main marketing purpose and how you can make your voice and tone sound like that? So here are some examples. When we're talking about character, it's about be, uh, being, are, are we going to be friendly or playful or warm or authoritative or inspiring or professional? So it really depends on what your startup or your business is selling. And I can't really give you um, an answer on which ones are right, because if you, let's say, are a medical startup, you need to be professional, you need to be uh, you use different languages than if you are uh, a brand that is tailored for children, where you need to be playful and friendly. Also, the tone, some examples of things that you can think about is, is it the personal tone? I'm not, am I going to be using personal um, pronouns or am I go going to be distanced from that? Am I going to use an honest tone, a direct tone, a humble tone, a clinical tone, a scientific tone? So it depends on what you're trying to do. The third thing is language. So some examples of that is, am I using a complex language? Am I using jargon filled words? Am I using a simple language, a savvy language? Uh, sometimes if you are if you are targeted to specific people or a specific community, you can use insider words that maybe people outside that community will not understand, but that doesn't matter because that is your your audience. Is it a fun language? Are you going to uh, are you going to be serious or whimsical? So that's that's what you can think about in terms of language. And then in terms of purpose, you can change your tone uh, or you can change your voice based on if you're going to be engaging with people or trying to entertain them or educate them or delight them, inform them or trying to sell something or enable them or empower them to do something else or amplify your message. So these are things that you have to think about in order to create and choose what voice you want to portray online. So here's um, a, an example where we can put you know, some of these together. So I'm thinking about content type, what am I going to be writing? So if, if the example is I'm going to write a tweet, 
And here I need to think about who is my reader? Who am I talking to in this scenario? And so it can be potential customers or marketing professionals in this example. Then I need to think about how are the readers going to feel? What are they feeling right now? And uh, what is my tone? How is my tone going to be um, consistent with their feelings? So if I want to, uh, if I want them to feel eager and engaged to find interesting content and information, I need to think about how my tone should be. So here it, it's helpful and informative, clear and approachable. So I can write something like, did you know the eight hour workday was invented to help people work less? We have the story here. So here you're giving them some sort of some sort of small information that it's uh, that might be interesting for them and then you give them a link or an action to do so that they are engaged and then you can also do things like comment tell them to comment or tell them to uh, buy something so it depends on the call to action that you would like to put so another important thing that i really don't have the time to go in in very detail is to think about the content that we want to produce and put out there to engage our customers. So here are some three things that we need to think about uh, in order to have a successful strategy. What type of content to post? So there's a lot of different things that we can do. This can be um, things like photos or videos or articles or status updates can also be infographics or quotes or animations just so many things that you can um, put into your strategy so uh, in general what what's working really well right now is video content because all the platforms are trying to become more video forward so they are trying to push high quality videos more organically to your audience, but also visuals work very well. My advice is never to have a post or a piece of content that's only text. Always uh, supplement it with a photo or a GIF or an interesting article with a link uh, or something that people can do. Because if there's just text, people are going to scroll and most of the time they're not going to notice it. Also. A lot of times I, I'm, I'm asked, what is the frequency of posting? How many times should I post a day? How many days should I post? And there's not really a, an exact answer to that question, but that depends also on your industry, on your startup, how much content you have. But every social network really favors consistent posting. So that can be a few times a week or every day. And once you stop posting for a while, you are more or less being punished by that social network, especially Facebook, uh, and your organic reach will be completely dropped. Uh, and once you post back again, no one will be seeing your post. So it's very important to remain consistent in your posting. And it de depends on the social network. You're definitely going to be posting more on Twitter than on Facebook, for example, possibly more on uh, Instagram as well. So it depends on social network, depends how much content you have, depends on all the resources that we were talking about. And then a lot of people also ask, what is the best time to post? Should I be posting on which day of the week it's better to post? What time in the morning, in the evening? And in general, there are some trends that you can look into, but it also depends on your industry, on your product. But the key thing to remember is, think about when are your audience most likely to be free and on their phone scrolling? So that definitely is not going to be um, during working hours. It can be in the morning on their commute because most people who are not driving are on their phone if they're on the bus or if they're on the train or uh, in a taxi. Uh, it's usually during lunch break where they are eating and need something to do meanwhile. Or And then also it's usually before dinner or in the evening. But that also depends on um, when uh, depends on uh, your industry and your audience itself. And in terms of days, you will see that a lot of, depending on also if you're B2B or B2C, for B2B, most of the time, people are going to be on their phones during the weekend and on Friday, because if they're sitting at work and usually they have low energy by the end of the week, they're probably going to be scrolling on social media or on LinkedIn. So you have to take this into consideration and test it and look at your analytics and see when is my audience online? Uh, how, if I'm posting a lot, are they interacting more or are they interacting less? 
So you need to keep all of that in mind. And definitely, as I said, this can be a course on its own. In order to organize your, your life and make it less hectic for you to be consistent on social media and know what kind of content that you want to produce, it's very important to create a social media calendar. And this social media calendar will really help you minimize the time and effort that you put in. So if you put in maybe a, a whole day or one hour uh, or a few hours at the beginning of the month, where you outline everything you want to do this month, uh, all the promotions that you have, all the ideas that you want to talk about, anything related to that, then you uh, and get the photos that you want to use, maybe ask a designer to help you design all of that. In a couple of days, you'll have everything set for the whole month and you will not be able to worry about it. You will not worry about it and you will uh, can easily schedule on most platforms and you can uh, worry about other things that you want to do for your business. Once you have uh, created a calendar and started posting and maybe you're doing Facebook advertising or I'm not going to go into the different advertising types today, but once you're doing all of that, you need to also uh, try to assess if you're doing well or not. And most people don't do that. Most people just go and keep posting and then they don't go back and analyze if what they're doing is good, if what they're doing is actually getting them sales or getting them new customers. So, um, so here there are a few things that you, you can keep in mind in order to see if you're going or not. And it also depends on your business uh, if you want to um, uh, monitor or these KPIs or if you have other things that you want to keep in mind. So just to give you some examples, you can uh, look into the basic things, which are the clicks, the likes, the comments, the engagement. Uh, and then, but it's more important, there are more important metrics such as, is my audience act actually growing? So it's an audience growth rate. Uh, what is my post reach? How many people are seeing my posts? What is my upload rate? Uh, so that is the positive feedback that you're getting from people. Uh, what is the average engagement rate? What is the amplification rate, which is uh, people, uh, who, how many people are sharing my posts? What is, uh, am I going viral, so a virality, virality rate? The conversion rate, so it means that how many people actually bought things from me that actually came from social media platforms. The click-through rate is how many people clicked into, into my website or the percentage of people who clicked to, the, my, to my website. How much a, uh, a click is costing me uh, or uh, a thousand impressions of CPC or CPM if I'm, doing, if I'm paying money for advertising. So these are just a few things. We can definitely talk about these for hours. Uh, but it's good to have them in mind and research them in order to know if you're doing well or not. And then the last thing that also you have to keep in mind is monitoring. You have to monitor your platforms in order to engage with your customers. And also sometimes you need to monitor what others are saying about you, not even on your platforms, but you can set up things like Google Alerts to um, send you uh, emails quickly when someone mentions you in an article or on a blog or in a specific platform that you don't own. So what are customers saying about you and where are they saying it? These two things are very important for you to monitor and there's so many tools you can get online in order to do that. And then how will you respond to them? So you should also have kind of a conversation calendar, part of your strategy where you, if someone's asking you a question, you already have an answer written there. So it doesn't take you a lot of time to answer questions or to reply to comments. So. Uh, these are just a few things that, or the main things that are, are into, uh, are, are part of the social media strategy, but definitely there's much, much more that I couldn't cover today. So in a quick summary, um, the things that we talked about is how to map your assets or what, what assets that you need, uh, how to define your goals and how to know your audience, how to set your voice and uh, a little bit about developing your content. And finally, that you really need to be tracking and monitoring everything that um, you are doing. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll be taking some of the questions that we have now, but also uh, you can drop me an email, you can message me on the different platforms, check my website out. And also if you really want to learn about all of these different things and um, try to use, uh, learn new things, especially if you're a new startup, I would encourage you really to uh, join the uh, Boost to Facebook program with um, Startups Without Borders. I'm one of the trainers who uh, are delivering this program and it's very beneficial and it's also free. 
So if you, if you join that program, you'll be able to learn uh, a lot about how to use uh, the fa Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger to boost your uh, uh, startup, or even if you're still in the idea phase. phase. So thank you so much for listening, and I'll be taking questions uh, if there are any. Thank you very, very much, Mohammed. Um, thanks for all the insights. I know it was just a small part, um, but yeah, let's see. We've got some questions. So Great. we have one from Dr. Ismail Said, who's asking, is there enough segmented demographic data from MENA and South Asia to make Facebook marketing a cost effective as Western populations? Yes, actually, I've been using Facebook uh, advertising and their data for more than a decade now, and it's very, very effective. I would say it's even more effective than in the West. Uh, because I've been doing campaigns for Silicon Valley and campaigns for Lebanon and Egypt and Dubai. And the ones that we're doing for the MENA region, they are more effective, they are cheaper. You are able to uh, reach a bigger audience with a much smaller budget as well. Okay, thank you. And there's another one from Noor Sharaf Edin, who's asking, is there anything that easily gets overlooked when in the early stages of applying the knowledge you're sharing? And is there anything we can do to overcome these unnecessary mistakes? I think the biggest mistake that people do is not having a strategy. They just um, come up with posts every single morning and then they just post them and they don't know what's happening uh, in terms of analytics, if they're actually doing well, if they're growing their audience. So it's really important to take the time, take a week, sit with your stakeholders and try to create the strategy. A lot of people will not do that, will not invest that, but you can easily tell and go on, on social media uh, and see which companies have actually a strategy and know what they want from their customers uh, or the people who follow them and people who are just posting for the sake of posting. So th this is for me the biggest mistake. And even if you make small mistakes doing this or if you overlook small things, you will eventually get there. So don't let it intimidate you. Try creating that strategy and try to really think about that because it will only benefit your business. I think that were, these were all the questions. Mm, let's see. If there's... Okay, thank you very much for sharing all of this. And like you said, guys, make sure to join the Boost with Facebook sessions that we have the program and also make sure to join the other sessions in the afternoon. Definitely. Thank you so much. It's been a privilege to be Thanks. with uh, you today. And if you, anyone else has any questions, feel free to drop off, uh, drop me an email or on LinkedIn, and I'll be very happy to uh, assist you with any issues that you might have. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. You too.